why do we travel? We travel to see beautiful places, we travel to do activities which we can't do where we live. We travel to meet new people, understand different points of views and learn about other cultures. Now, why is that last point difficult? I mean, the first barrier that we often meet is language. So several people have asked me to do this and I'm just going to explain how I approach learning a new language that I, that I don't know at all. So I've, I've slowly evolved my methods over time, learning four languages, kind of German. I've taken bits of advice and things that other people have suggested and molded it into, into my own thing. So this is what works for me. You might have a different way. If you do, let me know. Hopefully I will learn something new. All right, the very basics. Words. Memorizing words. In my opinion, it's the most fundamental thing in learning a language. This is the bread and butter. If you know words, then you can string them together to make something that is somewhat coherent. If you don't, you're lost. Hear me out. There's, there's two methods that are normally talked about. The first one is kind of the old school method of grammar first. So the basics there is that you understand the structure of the language and then you fill in the different bits, which is great. Well, the problem is that if you, un you can understand all about prefixes and suffixes and cases and word order and all of that, but if you don't know what you're putting in those places, you're dead. You're the second way is the new school way to learn little sentences that can get people communicating in correct language. This is what's taught in school. Hi, how are you? What's your name? My favorite pets are dogs. What do you think about the environment? That kind of stuff. Now, essentially what you're doing there is you're memorizing strings of sounds that you know as a whole have this meaning. And some people absolutely own it. English, Arito, no problem, only so. We thought you'd won it a couple of racks before you did win it. Mm. My name is Naoki Oi. Today, very lucky. Congratulations, me! Yay! So, um, <laughs> so you had that shot to win it, and then you kind of recreated it for the crowd afterwards. When that shot didn't go in, did you think, I might have blown it here? Ah, uh, I have a pear. I have an apple. <laughs> Oi, apple pear! <laughs> Words first. If someone comes up to you on the street and says me wanting food or foods I want restaurant where now that's not good grammar he's got it all wrong but you know exactly what it means in simple sentences at least we have no issue understanding weird order or stuff like that lost the planet master obi-wan has how embarrassing in my opinion the first thing is to understand people and to be understood to be able to create complex language and perfect form is excellent, but it's definitely second. The other great thing about memorizing words is that it's useful at every single step in the process of learning a language. Whether you're right at the beginning or you're a complete pro, there's always going to be words that you don't know. Anyone? <music> Choosing the right words. Um, this might sound weird, but what, what, where do you start? What words do you start learning? There are tens or hundreds of thousands of words in the language. Where do you start? So something that I got from, um, from other people who use similar methods to me is to look up the list of the 100 and then 1,000 most used words in your language. Now, you just, just Google it. Uh, frequent words in spoken Indonesian or... or most frequent words in Spanish. Now, I have an issue with that. It's good in principle. The thing is that you find that the first 100 words include a lot of things like, a lot of weird little words like for and then and stuff like that, which, which are really useful. I mean, we use them all the time, obviously, but they have five, six different meanings. Uh, for example, um, in German, you've got the word doch, which means however, sometimes, but it can also mean 
no, as in not no, when someone says no and you mean, when you mean not no, when someone else says no and you mean yes, and so you say not no, yes. Huh? Or in Indonesian there's the word yang, which means that, or that is, or the, or who, or which, or the one that is, or or sometimes it doesn't mean anything at all. Yeah. What do you do when you're presented with something like that? Do you learn one meaning, or do you learn... All? I choose to ignore them. Stick with important words which have a clear, distinct meaning. Sweep your problems under the carpet. Ignore them. They will fly away. They won't. They will come back to haunt you, but it doesn't matter. If you get bogged down by little things like that, you'll get discouraged. The other useful words to know are words that are particularly useful to you. So if you're going surfing, then you might want to learn surfboard and wave and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, Alright, so let's get down to it. In simple terms, what you want to use is mnemonics. But it's not normal mnemonics. So the easiest way is to show you. So let's start easy. Let's take um, the Indonesian for the word tree. The Indonesian for the word tree is pohon. Now, what's, what's the first thing that comes to mind to you when you hear the word pohon? To me, it sounds like Pokemon, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with that. So, so the first step is to combine those two images. We've got tree, and we've got Pokemon. Right now, I'm imagining Pikachu on a tree, and I could move on, but there's a good chance that I would forget that. To really cement it, I've got to really experience it. Let's imagine this Pikachu on a tree. So maybe Pikachu has climbed up this huge tree and it's really scared, it's scared of heights and it's yelling and in the air there's a smell of of electricity and and you're terrified, you're terrified it's gonna fall and and all of a sudden it does, it trips and it falls and it hits the branches on the way down the tree and it lands with a leaving its blood and its guts all the way up the tree and you're devastated your Pikachu is dead and and it's left its its remains on this tree. Now is that is that vivid? Is that slightly emotionally scarring? Good. If it is, you've learned it. You will never let go of that of that image, of that word. Tree sounds like Pokemon. Pohon. The more you the more you experience something, the more vivid it is, the more emotionally attached you are to a to an image, the more you're gonna learn it. Put yourself into the universe of of these words. What what does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What does it make you feel? If you do all of that, you will remember these words. So at least 80% of them, they're way more likely to stick. But I hear you. Tree it's an easy one to do, it's an easy one to remember, it's a small word, it's not a difficult concept. Let's notch it up a level. I can do another video on that, and this one is already way too long. Give me a thumbs up down there, and click subscribe down there. Oikin.